Those of you who watch the channel will know that I am a documentary film fanatic. So here are my 10 favorite of all time. 10 documentaries that you absolutely must see in this lifetime. And also my challenge to you guys today is leave in the comments your favorite documentary film of all time that I didn't mention and why. So with that, let's get into it. So the first one is Gonzo, the life and work of Dr. Hunter S. Thompson. And it's a bit of a two in one package because there's another documentary about Hunter S. Thompson called Buy the Ticket, Take the Ride. For those of you who don't know, Hunter S. Thompson wrote Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas and was played in that movie by Johnny Depp. But where would we place Hunter S. Thompson? I mean, for me, I think Hunter is one of the most, without question, one of the most important uh, writers of the 20th century. Hunter was an irreverent rebel, an incredible writer, a political and social commentator, at one point a candidate for office, and somebody who is a truly a hero to me. I just think that he's one of the most interesting, cool, badass, and intelligent people to ever walk the earth. He truly had balls of steel. He never cared what anybody thought about him, and he even went and lived with the Hells Angels for a while and wrote a book about that. He reinvented a, a style of writing mm -hmm. uh, by putting himself into the situation, by, by living it. These documentaries about Hunter S. Thompson made me want to get more out of my life. They made me want to take more risks and be more bold. Because like Hunter S. Thompson says, and this is one of my favorite quotes of all time, life should not be a journey to the grave with the intention of arriving safely in a pretty and well-preserved body, but rather to skid in broadside in a cloud of smoke, thoroughly used up, totally worn out, and loudly proclaiming, wow, what a ride. Number two is Werner Herzog's film, Into the Abyss. I don't want to sound like an evil person, but I'm so glad I went to the execution. Now, Werner Herzog is one of the greatest documentary filmmakers of all time, and this, for me, is my favorite of his work. It's a film where he explores the idea of why people kill and also capital punishment by interviewing a few young guys that committed a heinous murder, one of which is on death row, scheduled to be executed eight days after the interview. I don't know what's gonna happen, huh? We're gonna see. We're gonna find out, I'll find out on Monday. It's an amazing insight into the mindset of somebody who is facing imminent death on death row, and also a sad story about a few young guys who just threw it all away. And at times I felt myself feeling sorry for these guys and wanting to reach out my hand and even feeling like I could really relate to them. But then you're reminded of just what they did. The emotions in this one are truly conflicting and it's a roller coaster that you have to ride. Number three is All This Mayhem. This is a story about two brothers from the wrong side of the tracks in Australia who took the skating world by storm, becoming some of the best skaters in the world. But this gnarly lifestyle of sex, drugs, rock and roll and skateboarding would eventually catch up to them and things would unravel in just the most insane and mind blowing way. I don't want the Pappas brothers to be remembered as just maniacs. I had these huge dreams. Gone all America. Got a smash walk. Who are these guys? This documentary is honestly just a wild story and with so many different twists and turns along the way, it'll keep you on the edge of your seat, biting your nails, cringing, and so much more. Guys, this content is a little bit different, I know, but if you enjoy this and if you wanna see more of this sort of content, then hit that like button because it helps me to understand whether or not you're getting value from this. Number four is Roadrunner, a film about Anthony Bourdain. A truly incredible and adventurous and deeply thoughtful and sensitive man, and a man that lived an amazing life. And it's just remarkable how much footage there is of Anthony Bourdain. And at times you get lost in this documentary and it feels as though Anthony Bourdain is presenting the documentary himself. I said earlier that I was gonna tell you the truth. This is part of it. It's the story of somebody so aspirational, but also somebody so human and somebody that was never anything but himself. And that's why so many people loved Anthony Bourdain. And this film is an incredible insight into the man, whether you don't know anything about him or whether you're already a fan. Number five is The Bridge, one of the most unique, thought-provoking and disturbing documentaries of all time. Director Eric Steele and his crew filmed the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco for the entirety of 2004 during daylight hours and captured almost all of the half dozen 
people who jumped. But the truly moving and remarkable aspects of this documentary is when they tell the story of the people that jumped. The film puts together the pieces of the puzzle of these individuals' lives and gives an insight as to how they got themselves to that place and interviews their family and friends. Usually on those types of days, I always soak in the beauty of the bay and look over to Alcatraz. There's just so much depth to this documentary and it leaves you with so many questions about life and suffering and other big existential ideas. Number six is When We Were Kings, the story of the rumble in the jungle and the heavyweight boxing match between George Foreman and Muhammad Ali held in Africa. But there's much more to the story than that. This story is about this spirit of bravery. This is the story of what it means to be a true warrior, a warrior that is willing to lay it all down in the pursuit of greatness and legacy. This is the story of one of the greatest men that ever lived. I murdered a rock, injured a stone, hospitalized a brick. I'm so mean, I make medicine sick. Now I'm an old school boxing nut and I'm also extremely fascinated by men who conquered in their lives. How does one acquire such a mentality to be able to achieve such great feats? Were they born with it or was it learned? How do they deal with self-doubt, especially when all the odds are stacked against them? How does one not only think that they're capable of being the best in the world, but then put it into practice and do it for the world to see. Muhammad Ali is truly the embodiment of all of that. And this documentary allows you for a moment into the world of the greatest. Whatever it is that you want to do with your life, whatever that big goal is that you've always wanted to do, that thing that you've always wanted to achieve, watching this documentary and for that matter, anything else about Muhammad Ali will inspire you to go ahead and grab it. Number seven, Crumb. Now, this is the story about the famous underground cartoonist Robert Crumb. Now, to say that Robert Crumb comes from a broken home is a gigantic understatement. He comes from one of the most traumatized upbringings that you could possibly imagine. But somehow, he manages to turn his downtrodden strangeness into a passion and something that he's actually incredibly good at. This is the story of how he became a successful cartoonists and lived a relatively normal life after that, albeit still a very strange man. But it kind of works for him considering the industry that he's in. But the truly shocking and moving part of this documentary is the scenes when they go and visit Robert Crumb's siblings, who didn't quite manage to figure it out like he did. Uh, so I walk up behind her while she's like paying for this fucking shampoo or something, and so grab the bottom of her fucking shorts. I can't even get any erection anymore. Oh my God. <laughs> And these scenes show you just how far into hell one can sink. Number eight, Cannibal Warlords of Liberia, a Vice documentary from back in their heyday when they were still cool. This is one of the greatest Vice documentaries of all time from back in the heyday when they were still cool. Shane Smith and his crew go to Liberia, one of the most war-torn countries in the world in West Africa, just to see what it's all about, I guess. Our, our driver, who was also supposed to be our security, was so freaked out that he peeled out, nearly hit a group of people that had surrounded the car. And if you hit a group of people down deep in West Point, that was it. It was a death sentence. They would have tore us apart. Now, Liberia is a terribly poor country and a place where, as you can see in the documentary, People are so unbelievably desperate and it actually made me feel at times extremely uncomfortable and almost guilty about all of the things that I have and how fortunate I am to be born in a lucky country and have the comfortable and beautiful life that I have. But what makes this documentary so incredible is that Shane and his crew literally risk their lives on multiple occasions. At one point they go to a disgusting brothel in the middle of the worst slum in Liberia, which makes it one of the worst slums in the world and one of the most dangerous places in the world. And what happens next is just freaking wild. We're gonna go in here. This is the brothel. Uh, we're gonna see what's going on. This is the exemplification of hell, really. Number nine, we have got Ross Kemp on Gangs, the episode where he went to Cape Town. Now, Ross Kemp, as you guys will all know, is an OG. And his old show, Ross Kemp on Gangs, was some of the greatest TV 
ever made. But this episode in particular has always haunted me. Ross goes inside the four walls of a prison called Polesmore in Cape Town, a prison that's home to many individuals that are part of what's called the Numbers Gang. And this gang is just so brutal that this prison would have to be, I think, genuinely the last place on earth that I would ever want to end up. But the most harrowing part that is burnt into my brain is when towards the end, Ross Kemp interviews the guy who they call the general. He's the most feared man in the prison and no wonder because this man, when you watch him, is literally like watching the devil incarnate. The things that this guy does to other prisoners and the way he just describes it in the most cold-blooded fashion is something that will live in your nightmares. So viewer discretion is advised, but if you're into the darker sides of humanity like I am, then go right ahead. And I took the knife in stab him in his heart and the two times when the blood come out and to finish it off on a lighter note number 10 is hoop dreams this is a documentary that was filmed over a few years filming the parallel paths of two promising young basketballers as they try and make it in the sport the amazing story of two boys and two families struggling against the odds. I think that this film does an amazing job at capturing life in America. And when I watched it as a teenager, it really made me want to visit. But furthermore, I've never seen a documentary where I was so emotionally attached to the characters. And you so badly want their dreams to come true and you're rooting for them to beat the odds. So go and watch that one, guys. Guarantee you'll love it. And after it, you'll definitely be Googling the where are they nows of all of the main characters. So guys, I'm gonna put in the bio and in the comments where you can find all of these documentaries because you know I'm nice like that. And like I said before, after you've chucked a like on the video and subscribed to the channel if you haven't already, then leave a comment with your favorite documentary. Because guys, I've watched just about everything and I need some new suggestions, so help me out here. So as always guys, find me on social media, Instagram, Twitter and all of that good stuff. If you guys wanna watch another video, click right here. Until next time, I'm Jake, this is Rattlesnake TV, keeping you armed and dangerous.